Number six, the horizon effect. Chess engines calculate incredibly deeply, but there is a limit to their remarkable vision. In some cases, criti critical points are beyond the engine's ability to calculate. In fact, there are two quite famous examples from the most elite possible matches. The first, first example comes from the already mentioned Kasparov versus Deep Blue match in 1997. Under pressure, Kasparov conceded the game resigning early, but it later turned out that both Kasparov and Deep Blue had missed 45 queen three, which drops the bishop, but amazingly secures a perpetual check. Yes, I remember this game very well. Um, and uh, yeah, queen e3 is an incredible move here. Like queen e3 and, and rook e8, and, and black is actually drawing this game because there's no way for white to avoid all these checks on the light squares. And um, it's, uh, it's, pr it's pretty insane. So, yeah, something's cut off, I'm, I'm being told. What's, what's cut off? Uh, I don't understand. Why is the chat on stream? It looks weird. Uh, because that's, that's because we want to have chat on stream. Why not have chat on stream? So, all right. Seven years later, humans were no longer using chess engines as opponents, but they were starting to rely on them more and more in their opening preparation. Playing GM Peter Leko, GM Vladimir Kramnik relied a bit too much on the engine in, the, in his Marshall Gambit preparation. The engine initially told Kramnik he was winning, but Leko let his engine calculate more deeply and realized that the mating attack would triumph over Kramnik's past pawn. I have a couple of stories that I could tell you guys about that are related specifically to this topic. Um, yeah, like here in this move after a6, there's this great move, queen d3, uh, king f2, bishop takes, knight e4, and it wins. And I think the thing is that probably at the basic depth, the computer said a7 here was winning for sure, and it's not. Um, so... Uh, so, so yeah, that's, um, uh, one second. Let me see if I can change something. Just give me one second. Let's see. Oh, no, maybe it's not. Maybe it's okay. Maybe I can do this. Okay. Maybe it's better. A little bit better. Um, one second. Let me just pull it out that far. Okay. Um, so, so, so yeah. Uh, so, so this would have been winning anyway, I, I'll give you th this specific example. There are two games. Um, is there another game that I can, th there's definitely one game I can think of and it was very painful. So I'm going to, I'll show you guys the game. Let me find the game. Um, uh, let me see if I can pull it up. Kutrin US championship. Um, yeah, so I'm going to pull up the game very briefly. I'll, I'll go off of the scene. Just give me one second. and pull this up. Um, so I'm just going to change the scene for a second. Um, just go here or actually no wrong, wrong thing. let's go here okay so i'm gonna pull this game up this is the game that i played um it's a game that i played uh, uh why is the board still off sorry you guys it's a game that i played against sergey kudrin in the united states chess championship um in 2004 this was the the, the event was held in 2004 it's called the 2005 u.s championship i did end up winning this event this was my first u.s championship but this game that, that that happened was very early on in the event and i remember this was all preparation so we'll go straight through the game so it's a grunfeld for e3 i played d takes c5 um and we keep going this by the way i also in the same event or maybe it was a year before i had this position with the black pieces against yasser sarawan uh in the previous year's u.s championship Anyway, we keep going. Okay, queen a1 takes e4, d6, queen a3. Right, and I believe it was in this position that the computer said bishop g5 was, it said it was something like this is plus um, plus three or something like that. I can move my cam over, sorry about that. But it basically, it said that in this position, it's uh, that, that the position is plus three for white. But the problem is after bishop g5, knight c6, and d797 black is actually completely fine i think the reason it said this is because i believe the computer said something like rook takes c6 um b takes c6 d takes e7 is winning but in fact as i recall i think after bishop a6 black is black is in fact winning here because after takes rook f8 there's now this bishop c3 idea and you're going to lose your queen and you also can't castle so um so when uh so so when I had this game against Sergey Kuzner, I remember during the game I had this exact position after King H8 on the board, this exact position, and the computer said Bishop G5 plus three, and so I saw plus three. I'm happy with it. And I'm going to move back to something uh something else. That was uh that was that that was um that was what I was going to do. Unfortunately, after Knight to C6, uh huh. I, as I realized during the game, I'm actually in trouble, and I was very lucky that I was able to. Uh, I was able to, to draw this game because it was uh, potentially very, very bad. 
so yeah that that was one of those one of those things that was um really 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 a, a perfect example in my own games where that happened there was another game that was in my mind a minute ago but i forgot what it was um as well but the, but that Kramnik example this is a perfect one that i had as well okay so let's go back to the article um let's go back here okay all right so let's let's go back to the article so there, there was this another engine failure for Kramnik as well um no you can't see the engine evaluation in regular um in, in regular but uh during regular games but it was all preparation and then like during the game much to my horror i realized it no i wasn't using the computer during the game i had done the preparation before the game um and then i got the exact position i blitzed out bishop g5 i thought i was winning against kudra and he he thought for like probably 10 or 15 minutes played knight c6 and in my mind i'm like uh-oh like i realized as soon as it happens like this stupid engine got it wrong um so yeah it was uh it was really it was really disappointing what engine was it in 2005 i think the, i think the engine i was using was ribka i think it was ribka um but anyway let's keep going okay this victory brought Pierre Leco to within a hair of becoming a world chess champion. All right. Okay. Today's engines immediately spot out the correct evaluation of both Deep Blue versus Kasparov and Kramnik versus Leco, but there are still positions featuring checkmates and other details that may be beyond their horizon. Most chess engines will struggle with the following beautiful mating pattern in which Black has many delaying moves to calculate, but a human can clearly see they will not help. All right. Oh, this is a Zug Zugzwang. This is the... Um, this is Zugzwang. It's like it's Queen C8, and then you have you play the delay. Del you have the delayed move. Um, maybe it's not Queen C8 first, but you have the delayed move in this sequence. How do you sack the queen? I th I think it's Queen C8. I think it's Queen C8, right? And then it's Bishop E7. I'm trying to remember. I know you sack the queen here. I just don't remember. It's I th I'm pretty sure it's Bishop E7. No, it's not. Oh, wait. How how do you get? Oh, wait. Okay. I mean, I've seen this before. I'm just trying to remember the exact sequence. Bishop B. Oh, wait, I'm trying to remember. Um, because you you go over. Okay. I'm trying to remember the exact sequence because I I have seen this before. Um, or, or I know I again like Gary was saying like when we were doing it the other day. There's a sequence where you where where it's like I can sort I can see the end position. I just can't remember exactly. How to get there um it's not bishop e7 it's bishop c7 maybe it's not bishop takes a5 it's not bishop e7 it's not bishop b6 it has to be bishop c7 and then you take and then it's um and then it's bishop e5 i'm pretty sure it's just bishop e5 here unless i'm crazy it's just here right yeah it is and then and then it goes on. This is the tricky part. It goes on because it's not it. And then you have to go, I think you go is it to A1 or B2. I'm just, it could be, it could be B2, but I think it's, um, no, why can't I remember this now? Or is it D? No, it's not D4. How does this line go? I'm trying to remember. It's not Queen G5. Not bishop b2. Bishop b2, knight c7. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember how this goes because it still is. There's knight c7 at the end, and I'm just trying to remember. Knight c7. Knight c7. I mean. Bishop a1, a4, bishop b2, a3, bishop a1, b2, bishop b2. Yeah, and at the, yeah, it's, it's, I'm trying to remember which, which order is. It's not king e6. It's, um, it's a1, a, a1, a4, bishop b2, knight c7, bishop a1, um, bishop a1, a4, bishop b2, a3, bishop a1, knight c7. Hmm. Why am I struggling with this puzzle so much? Because I've, I've seen this before. But I just, I'm struggling to remember the exact order of moves. Bishop, Bishop A1, A4, Bishop B2, A3. Okay, so 
So wherever you move the bishop, black has to go knight to seven. A1, A4, B2, A3, bishop A1. So bishop A2, knight C7, bishop A1, A4, bishop A2. I think it's bishop B2 unless I'm crazy. Yeah, it is. It's bishop B2, and then then you delay, then then you wait, right? You just wait, yeah. And then you go back, and then you go here, yeah. And then you take, and now you go king check, and now you take with check, and now you make the queen, and you win the game, yeah. And and that, that's that's how the puzzle goes. Um, so yeah, okay. So let's let's keep going. All right, number seven is a Zugzwang. Both chess players and elite chess engines are challenged by the concept of Zugzwang. Zugzwang is a German phrase often translated in chess context as compulsion to move. Simple Zugzwangs are typically easy to understand. A player is on move and has a position that would be fine if no move was required. However, chess does not permit a player to pass, so a move but must be made and the position will crumble. More complex Zugzwangs may, have t may take many, many more, many, many moves to be apparent. Here is a great example in which one engine, Stuflis, sees a computer Zugzwang after 21H3, but Sockfish doesn't appreciate the problem in time and loses as a result. Interesting. Okay, let's see. What's this? In the 15 position, castles happen, and now on queen to d8, we're in a main line that looks very similar to what we just saw between Karyakin and Nakamura. White sheets so much, and note that black, this is it. White in this position plays the move. Pawn to h3, yeah. We've given up material, a piece, and how has the attack been improved by the move h3? Mm hmm absolutely crazy because we analyze this i analyze this myself and then and then jeremy helps me on analyzing it and a uh, guy that works so hard on chess.com's lessons they're amazing you should check them you out. can't hear it oh sorry we literally went through options and could not find moves for black it should be getting louder the best description for it which i just turn the volume up i've ever seen the point is that we've established a lot of reasons why the bishop can't develop queen takes g7 and then the it's not H6 weakens the light squares, so rook takes E6 wins on the check. Um, moving the queen to squares that don't keep an eye on either the rook or the, the backwards attack coming to the back rank. We're going to see why in, in critical variations coming up. The most logical thing to do, if you can't move any of these pieces, is to bring your rook back. And just open it in YouTube? I mean, I could just open it in YouTube too, I guess. That's true. Back to safety, which is what Stockfish did, having won the now it's probably much louder, and right? The move that might actually be just as good as H3 in terms of why. Now it should be a lot louder. Yeah. Rook to C8 also does open ideas with Queen E1, and the second move C3 says that doesn't that that's not 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 gonna not gonna work here anymore. Same volume. What? The point with this is that White has actually prepared a look for the king to hide, and with the move C3, mm. Black is actually. Well, there's nothing I can do about that in terms of the sound compared to um. Yeah, I'm in the audio mixer, but there's there's nothing I can do about the sound uh, of of the of the volume itself uh, of the video itself. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's it's H three. Okay, so let's let's go back. Um, keep going. Num number eight, the mad the mad piece. GM Alexander Kosteniuk uh, recently presented her best chess move during the 2021 candidates coverage, and she showed a pattern that is known to Russian chess lovers as the mad piece. A piece that is trying desperately to force the opponent to capture it. Usually, capture results. Um, usually, capture results in stalemate. Here is her example. Okay. See, like I bet the sounds better on this one. For example. Hello, I'm Alexandra Kostinyuk, the 12th Women's World Chess Champion. And today I'm going to show you a very special move that I made in one of my games. Yeah, see, now it's different, yeah. On the diagram, you see me playing black against Dinara Gorgiva in 2018 Russian Team Chess Championship. It's black to move. How would you proceed? My pawn is on F2, and it's about to get promoted. The question is to what piece? Well, I... <laughs> underpromoted the pawn into a rook. Let's see what would have happened if I'd promote my pawn into a queen. In that case, after queen takes d2, and now I need your help. This situation in Russian and this particular queen is called a mad queen because it keeps, it keeps self-sacrificing. 
for a stalemate. And if black accepts, well, in this particular <laughs> situation, there is no way to avoid it. If black takes white queen, it's a stalemate. So what is this term called in English? I'm waiting for your comments. And let's get back to the game. In the game, I played, as I already mentioned, f1 rook. And it changes everything. So queen takes d2 doesn't work. Okay, so anyway, that's that's a queen and uh, or, or white makes a rook and white or black makes a rook and black is winning. So let's keep going. Another another great example occurred in a game between two chess engines. In a difficult spot, Shredder saw the coming escape, but Gal did but Goal Goal did not. Okay. Um what? What did I say? Never heard of the mad queen? Yeah. What are you guys talking about? Anyway, let's keep going. What are you guys talking about? Okay, so, um, all right. Yeah, what are you guys even talking about? Okay, so this is Shredder versus Gold. This is a draw. What, what is this? Like, rookie seven, bishop b3. Oh, what a beautiful stalemate. Oh, what a beautiful. Oh, my gosh. What a beautiful. Tr oh, my God. What a beautiful trick. Wow. Wow, what a trick. That is so beautiful. This is so beautiful. Because if you take with the queen, it's just a draw. The knight, the knight stopped the king. The king can't move anywhere. That's a really dirty trick. Wow, what a trick. Here is another example from Tim Crabba's blog, Under Promotion in Games. This example seems to be from real but ill-sourced game from the Soviet Union. Sokolsky versus Ravinsky. Okay, um, so this is an under promotion, I guess. So you probably promote it to a, not a rook or a queen. Um... I'm guessing you promote to a bishop probably, and you just you're just winning. No, I meant I meant bishop. Let's go bishop. Yeah, um, and and white's winning. So let's keep going. Okay, number nine, the trapped piece. Related to its struggles to appreciate closed positions and fortresses, sometimes engines can't appreciate the struggles of trapped pieces. If the piece is soon to be captured, the engine will easily spot the challenge. But what if the piece cannot be captured, but al can also never be freed? That can be much harder for the engine to comprehend. A practical example is Kramnik's burial of GM, Nid GM Nigel Short's bishop on b3. In the following positional masterpiece, the engine likes black, but it doesn't immediately appreciate what Kramnik did. White is just lost. I actually was there in London at that tournament, and the move is d5. And this is exactly the same technique from um, or idea from uh, from the game between Winter and Capablanca, where the bishop on b3 is, is just dead for the rest of the game. Uh, it's the exact same thing, but on the other side of the board. And uh, I think I've mentioned it before, but the the bishop is just dead. This is this is Winter versus Capablanca, 100%, which I showed in my YouTube video when I was going over Capablanca's be Capablanca's best games. Um, if you if you find that video on YouTube and you pull it up, you'll see that uh, you'll see that it's the exact same thing, but on the other side of the board here. Um, all right, so let's keep going. How can white save the following position? Incredibly, there is a way. Okay, white should be able to draw this game. Okay, so the rook and the rook and the bishop are under attack. You're going to definitely lose one of your juicers. Um, my guess is there's some trick here with rook a8. My first instinct is rook a8. Um, so that, that would be my first instinct. Rook a5 is no good. Rook a8 makes sense. There's probably, probably what you do is you play rook, oh, I think you go rook c8. You have to go some rook c8, but then bishop e4. Hmm. Maybe it's king b6, rook e5, check, 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 check. Rook a7, rook e5, king c6, it's just a draw. Rook d5, king e8, you just check, check. King e8, you go, go, hmm. There should be some way. It's like Rook A7. You can't find the Capablanca video. Um, uh, let, let me let me see if I can pull it up. I'll pull it up. Um, let me see if I can pull it up. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up. Uh, I'll, I'll ask I'll ask my mods about that because I'm not I'm not not 100 sure. But anyway, let's see. Okay, so what is the move? You can you can. You can't sack the rook. You guys want to play b4, but after takes bishop e4, the rook gets out. So it's not b4. Um, it's it's rook a. It's some kind of rook a. It's rook a for sure. But I don't know the next move. That's kind of the trick here. It's rook a. King b7. King f7. King f7. It's not king b6. 
Um, it's probably where k7, king e8, and there's some way that you can extrapolate your king in. Not sure. I'm actually not sure. I mean, doesn't make sense. Like, rook e8 takes king b7 is a move. Um, I mean, okay, I mean, it has to be a rook move, right? Like, what else can it be if it's not, if it's not a rook move? Okay, rook e8 is the only move that makes sense, right? Rook e7, no. Rook e6, no. Rook c6, no. B6, no. Rook e6, no. Rook c6. Wait. Wait a second. The king is boxed by the three pawns. Wait, it just occurred to me. I can do the same thing, but on the other side. Because if I play b4, he gets the outside pawn. If I go c6, he doesn't get the outside pawn. Takes b4, but should be... Okay, I'm going to look at rook a8 and make sure rook a8 doesn't work. If rook a8 doesn't work, it has to be rook c6. Well, let me think. Rook a8 takes, takes. King f7. Rook a7, king e8. Rook a7, king... You just lose, so it has to be rook c6. It has to be this. Because now that I know that... Yeah, you, you just wait, right? You just wait. You take, and you just, you just... I think you just wait here, although I could be... It could be king d6. Hmm. This is tricky. Maybe maybe multiple moves work here. But my assumption is that it I mean uh My assumption is that it is king d6. Let's see. That's wrong. It's just you just wait, okay, and you just wait. I mean, I don't even know what the difference is exactly. What you go here and back. Oh, actually, wait, this, this side, this keeps going on when it's here and here and then takes, it's still wrong. Oh, you still go here. No, wait, wait, you go here. Wait, this actually, this, I, I should have let this one go for, forward because I thought this was just going to end, end very quickly, but it doesn't, I guess you just go. I don't even know what the difference is between the two moves here. Honestly, I like, what is the difference? Is there some, like, what is it? I don't understand. Is this actually losing? Oh, this is losing. Okay, th this is actually losing. So you do have to be careful. Um, uh, let's keep going. Number 10, the pin, the pin, pin piece. Much like trap pieces, pin pieces can be hard for engines to get a handle on. It's easy to appreciate pins that quickly, the pins, or it's easy to appreciate pins that quickly lead to material gain. But what happens if the pin isn't cashed in on, but instead, long-term immobility generated by the pin is exploited. Here's a nice example from Jim Anish Giri. Can you see his winning idea here? Okay, so G4 seems like a move. Um, A4 takes, takes G4, H4, H, H4, H6, G4, G5, and if H4, H5, just F3 and outflank, right? Oh, actually, it's, uh, it's just right here. It's right here in the moves. Ah, okay, whatever. Uh, okay, so A4 takes, takes, and then you play A, you, Oh, F4. Maybe A I thought H4 was winning here too. Maybe it doesn't make a difference. Place F4. Okay, I think it's the same thing. F4 and H4 both work, but um but yeah. Let's keep going. Okay. You might be able you, you might be able to untangle Geary's clever winning idea, but it will probably have you but it will probably have a quite it will pro it, but it will probably have quite a hard time finding the path to, to a draw in the following position for GM Pal Benko in the IQ test. This is IQ test number 16. Um, okay, so what do we have? This is um, probably just rook f2 and f5. You're down, you're down two pawns, so it's got to be rook f2 and f5, I'm guessing. It has to be. You go here and you go here. And it's a draw. Okay. Um, okay. I hope these spectacular positions and ideas have enthralled you and inspired you to think creatively, creativ creatively, oh my gosh, I'm doing it again, to think creatively about many chess positions. Of course, chess engines today still have much more to teach us about chess than we have to teach them. However, there, there, there are positions that, currently be, that are currently beyond them, and there are probably positions that will always be on both human and computer understanding. It is worth noting that modern chess professionals are, are cons constantly testing the limits of engine understanding in the opening. Opening theory doesn't typically feature the kinds of unique positions shown above, which radically challenge engine understandings, but top players are consistently 
Our top players are constantly working with engines to push limits of understanding and come up with new ideas that their opponents may have missed. Here is an example of the kind of innovation that one engine may come up with and another may miss as early as move six. Okay. The best idea in this article are what make chess worthwhile, the richness and depth of chess creativity. We are all of us, whether a novice, a grandmaster, or a chess engine, swimmers in a vast sea of complex ideas that can never be fully exhausted. Good stuff. I'm struggling to get Hikaru's accent. Sorry, you guys. Apologies. Anyway, um, yeah, it's a pretty good article. Some very good, very good examples in there as well. So um, good stuff. All right, I'm, I'm going to take a short break. You guys come back. We have one more article to cover on crypto, or not crypto, on um, on the upcom upcoming Meltwater event. But I'm going to take a short break. We'll come right back and... Um, and then we'll keep keep rolling.